Hey guys, welcome back again from Tampa Bay. Today I'm going to try to tackle, try because I've never been into this part of the bike before, but we'll see. I think I've got my theory right. The problem I've been having, it's very intermittent with my gear indicator in first gear not always indicating. Now, I have seen people report sometimes the neutral indicator will not come on and the display will blank out. The same kind of thing I'm having sometimes with first gear. And I know that they're all controlled by the same dang switch assembly. I know this is a mechanical issue, and here's how. The only time it happens is if I brake really hard, first gear will not indicate until I accelerate very hard. So something is moving forward and back with the momentum of the bike, affecting the first gear display not coming on. And it's totally blank. It's not that it doesn't go into gear. It's nothing with the engine or the transmission itself. It's something with a signal. So, the sender is right down here. This is the linkage between the, it's hard to hit things when you're looking on a camera, <laughs> between the foot shifter and the actual interface with the transmission, which goes through here. Behind it, this black plate right here, I have an annoying new redneck neighbor who just likes to drive around the block on his dirt bike and make a lot of noise. Look at me, look at me. Anyway, the sender is, the switch assembly, is this black plate. Let me focus it for you there. Right back in here. There's two Phillips screws holding it on, and we just have to get this out of the way so that we can pull it off and get to that top screw. And it should just be kind of like a barrel design. And I know that the way it works is basically six, this is a five speed transmission, so it's got six switches that ground out to indicate what gear or neutral that it's in. So I'm just gonna check the continuity. If anything uh, appears to be broken as far as uh, not good conductivity or anything, it's probably gonna be pretty sealed, so I'm just gonna replace the whole unit at something like 30 bucks. So I'm gonna pull that out, I've got to Take this, I think I should just be able to loosen this pinch bolt here, slide this out out of the way, and this should drop down far enough, and then I can just use those two Phillips screws to get the switch out. Let's give it a shot. So this is a 10 mil pinch bolt right here, and the first thing I did is make a pencil line so that I can get this adjuster back on the bracket exactly right. Obviously don't use anything permanent, just make a little mark like that. So now I'm going to go ahead and loosen this all the way and just slide this out of the way. And as always, whenever dealing with Phillips screws or those, I can't remember what they're called, J screws or some, the Japanese design that look freaking just like Phillips screws, super important to have the perfect fitting tip so that you do not strip the heads out. These do have blue thread locker on them, so expect a fair amount of initial resistance. Just make sure that you've got a, a tip that goes in there with zero play in it when you try to rock it side by side, and you'll be okay. You can give it a tiny little wrap with a rubber mallet if you want to, but it shouldn't need that. And eh, the thread locker doesn't always do anything anyway. Usually if it's red thread locker, you absolutely have to apply heat, but this just has, or should have, blue, so it's just a, a fairly mild bond. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take these two screws out, and we should be able to slide this whole assembly back out of the transmission. And as predicted, they're giving me some issues. This top one, I have to use a ratchet here just to get any kind of leverage. They are really in there tight, which is ridiculous because the torque spec on these is something like three foot pounds, I mean just absolutely nothing, but they are really snug in there. That thread locker is doing its job. Top one, I just got to start turning, so that's no big deal. Bottom one, just starting to strip out. So as soon as it started, I stopped. I'm gonna give it some wraps and uh, go from there. Well, here's what it took to get that last one just broken free. A pair of lock pliers, really secure on there, and finally, Got it to break loose. This is such a piece of crap screw and install. It's just coming apart like butter. So I'm gonna get that off with the pliers. Obviously order a couple new screws. I'll probably be ordering another one of these, so I'll wait to place the order until I get this out and take a look at it. But 
if you do this or have this kind of problem or ever need to take these out, bear in mind they are super soft and ridiculously tight. They didn't even start to loosen up until it was almost completely off. The threads, let me show you the other one I took out, they're almost completely covered in thread locker. That's not how you do it, man. Way too much from the factory. Way too tight. I just had a better thought. I'm not going to order new screws. I'm just going to go down to the hardware store and replace these with Allen head screws or hex head screws. Much better idea. There's nothing special about the thread or the screws themselves. Except that they're freaking Phillips. I hate these things. So now that the screws removed, we should be able to wiggle this little guy out of here. Excuse the noise, wife just decided to do laundry. <laughs> oh, this is tough with uh, one hand. Alright, well, it just wiggles back and forth. I'm going to pull it out. Stand by. There we go. Inside, we have a little contact pin and little pads that make contact on the switch itself here. The one at the top, right about 1 o'clock in your picture, is first, and then we have a little one for neutral. So that first one is the one I'm interested in, and unfortunately, I don't see anything wrong physically. So that means the problem is inside here. This wire goes up inside just behind this panel here. Not a big deal to get to, and there's a, a connect that goes into the main harness. So I'm just going to go ahead and reorder one of these here. That'll be the whole assembly with the wire. And uh, obviously the problem is inside, so there's no point in going any further. I'm not going to tear this apart for something so cheap. And uh, you know, there's probably not much I could do anyway because I'm not an electronics repair expert. But there's nothing mechanically wrong. It's very simple. You got an O-ring on here to seal the oil in. There's just a couple little drops that came down, so don't worry about cleaning up or putting a pan down in me or anything like that. So that's it. Order yourself one of these and pop it back in. Might need a new zip tie and that's about it. And I'll wait until uh, I get the new one in and make sure it works before I put this video up. We'll see. So here's my advice. If you ever plan on taking those screws out for any reason, do yourself a favor. Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or your favorite hardware store. These were a whopping 70 cents for both of them. They're M5, 0.8 by 16 mil metric cap head screws. Nice, solid connections on top. No more crappy Phillips. So that solves that problem. Okay, new plan, holy monkey. No place I found has any kind of reasonable deal on this. With shipping, they're pushing $50. That's absolutely ridiculous. So what I did is I completely cleaned it off, inside and out, engine side, and on all the pads, got out all the oil and gunk. It looks sparkling clean, nothing's moving around, so I'm gonna run it for a week, see if I can reproduce it, and hopefully that little bit of cleaning does something. If not, I'll have to bite the bullet and go ahead and replace it, but we'll see, and I'll be back for the end of this video to report if I can still get it to do it. It was really easy to repeat it, so it should be no big deal to see if that worked or not. Stand by. And success. All right, it's been a few days. I have not gotten it to repeat. Obviously it's off now, but I was even having trouble with it off as long as it was stopped. It would just not show first. And it would only come back after I would accelerate really hard in first or just into second. And then as soon as I'd slow down and come back to a stop, it would go away again. But you can see here it's going through everything just fine. Can't go into second because I'm not rolling, but it comes back into first. No problem. And it's been doing it as it should, back the way it should, on the road. So if you're like me and it's intermittent like that, give it a shot by just cleaning everything out really well. You know, maybe it was just too much oil film in there. Uh, the one thing I did notice is if you go back and watch in the video, you'll see the contact path for the pin that rotates in the engine and hits the pads. It's not quite as much on the pad for first as it was all the way through fifth. So it's like the rotation alignment just wasn't quite right between the part that moves in the engine and that electronics piece. So it didn't have as much contact on the first pad. And that's probably all it was. It was just... You know, it just needed that little bit more extra clean contact. 
So boom, there you go. Now, of course, if you've got a problem where it never shows up, obviously you want to go ahead and replace that. And uh, you'll find it on the Microfish, if you look it up online, under Electrical 1, and they call it the Neutral Position Switch. And it's 35 to 40 bucks for the part, and then shipping is 15 to 30 depending on where you get it from. Of course, your local dealer won't charge you shipping, but their prices are more towards the $50 just for the part, because that's the MSRP. So you really can't win unless you get a big order and you get free shipping over 100 bucks at some places. Well, that's just the way it is. So there you go. Hope it helps somebody. And big tip on those screws, replace them with cap head screws, and you'll never have a problem with those. And, of course, put them back on with uh, the proper amount of torque and blue Loctite. Thanks. See ya.